Introducing Potato Chips. Now with more megabytes. Hmm. Oh heck. Protogens! They're sentient toasters, robotic raptors, bleepy bloopers, animatronic aliens, and cybernetic organisms. Hi everyone, my name is Stormy the Fulf, and today I'd like to talk about the mysteries behind protogen suits. How are they made? Why are they so rare? And what makes these thick, fluffy, digitized creatures such an elusive find in the furry fandom. But before I continue, however, you might be wondering what the heck a protogen is to start with. Protogens are an original species based on primogens, both of which were created by Malus Risu. Basically, they're cyborg aliens. Anyone can make a protogen as they are a semi-open species. And although protogens were released after primogens, the lore states that protogens actually predate primogens. Hence the name Proto, short for prototype. If you want to learn more about their differences, lore, and rules, check the link in the description. However, when it comes to making protogen fursuits, it takes more than just stitching fur together and carving foam to perfection. A lot more. That's not to say you can't make a protogen suit with common traditional fursuit materials, but this video will focus on the more electronic type of protogen suits. I'd also say in addition to tuny, realistic, semi-realistic, and kimono fursuit types, protogen should honestly have their own category as well. Although, this could change if more types of electronic fursuits start to pop up. Simply put, protogen suits are based on an original species of the same name with anthropomorphic customary consisting of luxury shag fur, ethylene vinyl acetate foam, three-dimensional computer-aided designed plastic framing, a specially vacuum-formed visor helmet, properly programmed microcontroller, light-emitting diode matrixes, and a battery pack. I mean, they're not that difficult to make, right? But in all seriousness, protogen fursuits actually share a lot in common with most other types of fursuits. That is, until we head to the top of things. Here, we have the star of the show, LEDs. This is where things start to get interesting. Now, LEDs aren't particularly anything special in 2021, but the fact they're the acting face of protogen suit heads leaves the door open for countless types of expressions and more, limited only by your own imagination and programming skills, which we'll get to in a moment. Here, Dr. Wildlife is triggering a variety of digitized expressions depending on which fingers they squeeze, kind of like VRChat's own expression system. Just grab a protogen avatar and you can virtually experience what it'd be like to have a proto suit. On the front stage, we have the display. As I previously mentioned, LEDs, the semiconductor starlights, are the front of the show. It's the first thing onlookers notice about these cybernetic beings. A typical proto display is divided into six LED matrixes, three on each side, which represent the eyes, nose, and mouth. Although this number can vary between makers. The LEDs may also be monochromatic or full RGB. Illuminating symbols. Many protogen suits have a particular theme and may use an illuminating symbol to denote what it is, like a fire gin, a snow gin, and so on. Next up, we have the electronics. Ah yes, now this is where the magic happens. The visor display is usually driven by a microcontroller like an Arduino board. These microcontrollers are basically really small computers with multiple chips integrated into one big chip. Proto heads can get a little cramped and pretty warm, so it's best to use the smallest, coolest components available. You don't exactly need a Ryzen to drive a handful of LED matrix displays. Or is it Risen? I have always pronounced it Ryzen. The Ryzen has risen. Anyway, the idea with a microcontroller is that you feed it instructions which translate into various type of expressions, animations, or patterns through a program on your personal computer via USB, then instruct the microcontroller to execute the code. It gets very technical, and unfortunately it goes a little beyond what I know, so I'll link a video up above if you want to learn more. And of course, you want to power that microcontroller, you need a battery pack. Outside of proto heads, you can find microcontrollers in anything from keyboards to air conditioning units. And to enclose all of this electronic goodness, we need three parts. The fur, the base, and the visor. The fur is self-explanatory. It's, it's like any kind of luxury shag fur, basically. Like this one, but you can't have it, it's mine. Um, the base acts as a skeleton for the head itself. They're typically 3D printed and fortunately aren't too difficult to come by. You can get these straight from Kyborg Studios or make one yourself if you're skilled enough. 
However, things start to take a rather interesting turn with the visor. For most suit makers, the visor is the biggest roadblock when it comes to building proto heads. You can't just buy them from Amazon or commission them from your best 3D printer friend. No, no, no. Visors are concave, transparent plastic pieces that have to be manufactured through a unique process called vacuum forming. This procedure requires very expensive specialized machinery that even the most experienced suit makers probably aren't going to have on hand. And even if you somehow own a vacuum forming machine, you can't just push a button and out comes the visor. Now that's not to say makers won't sell visors to you, but they're few and far between. But you can get one from Kyborg Studios. I am not sponsored by them. They just happen to be a really popular protogen suit maker. I, I swear. Not sponsored. The visor is a particularly important piece in that it not only covers your face, but can work as a tinted one-way mirror of sorts. Transparent from the inside so you can see your surroundings, and opaque from the outside so you don't break the magic. One of the most well-known protogen suits in the fandom is Dr. Wildlife's. Their head was made by Kyborg Studios, with the bodysuit by Fur Zone Creations, and hand paws by Heads and Tails Studios. This is one of only three known Prosian full suits in existence. Or maybe four, possibly. And then there's Ruby the Protogen. Just look at those legs. Those are mega, mega dummy, dummy thick. thick. Turns out these oversized leggies were actually an accident by their prop artist, and they're slated to be redone at some point, but still. Dang. <laughs> Ruby's leg armor is made out of EVA foam. And this crimson delight is Feronium. Look to the side and you'll see the illuminating symbols I was talking about. Needless to say, proto heads are very animated. And another notable, albeit work in progress example is Coelacanth's insane proto head. It really illustrates what's possible when you've got a multitude of LEDs on hand. Seriously, the entire head is an LED display. Talk about taking advantage of real estate. And you could probably watch a YouTube video on this. It's equipped with a G sensor, which makes for neat gravity effects, as well as a microphone, allowing for animated lip sync. Needless to say, this proto head is pure eye candy. I also can't begin to imagine what kind of power supply and microcontroller it takes to drive this beast. Someday, I'd love to make an exclusive video documenting the technical madness of this techno toaster. How to get one. Kyborg Studios is probably the most popular Protogen suit maker right now. Their Protogen heads are assembled entirely in-house, including the vacuum forming process. And while they're not exactly cheap, you gotta realize there are only a handful of Protogen suit makers out there, and the equipment that's used to build these digital beans ain't exactly cheap either. It is a very, very specialized process. Another suit maker is J Tink. J Tink is a proto suit maker from Taiwan, and to say their electronic expertise is mind blowing would be an absolute understatement. They made a literal hecking Protogen toaster. Imagine having a Protogen that just makes you toast. I wish my computer did that. They too do their own vacuum forming process in house, and as you can tell, it's a rather interesting process. And yes, you can commission them, although I'm not sure if they're taking toaster commissions at this time. If you're a suit maker and electronics aren't your forte or you just don't find them interesting, you can still make a non-electronic proto head. There's no rule that says your Protogen has to be electronic. Plus, you'll have way better airflow too since your face isn't covered with a big piece of plastic. And if you do want to learn how to build a Protogen head, Mujiwara Cosplay has an excellent tutorial but be aware that again, the cost isn't going to be cheap. Just, just something to keep in mind. As of 2021, there are probably around 50 or less proto heads in existence and maybe two primogen heads. Rarer than hen's teeth to say the least. In my opinion, the reason these suits are such rare sights is because of things like cost, the materials involved, the machinery required, and of course, suit maker talent. It's definitely not lack of interest, I can tell you that much. As vacuum forming becomes cheaper and visors become more widely available, however, we're likely to see more makers step up and offer protogen commissions, thus increasing consumer availability. But it's hard to say when that may happen. LEDs, Arduinos, and fur aren't exactly hard to come by, but vacuum forming plastic, much like the bumper on your car, can't exactly be done at home. It kind of sucks, but at least, at least the visors themselves aren't that expensive overall. And I think as time passes, 
we'll start to see more makers offer visor commissions. The pandemic has also put an unfortunate strain on the furry economy. With the lack of conventions and fur meets, there's less interest to commission a suit. But make no mistake, things are going to take off like a hecking rocket once restrictions are lifted. We'll also no doubt see a rebound in opportunities for new protogen and primogen makers to take ground. And as time passes, the tech is only going to get cheaper, protogens are going to get more popular, more furries are going to join the fandom, and there is no telling what the future has in store. Personally, I can't wait to see what kind of suits the furry fandom comes up with. Someday, I would love to attempt to make a protogen suit, and if I do, trust me, y'all will know about it. <laughs> that would be a fun video for sure. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed my take on the awesomeness of protogen suits. There's still a lot I don't understand about them, so please forgive me. Take the finer details with a grain of salt. I might redo this video someday. Anyways, see you laters. Bye bye! Did you enjoy this video? If so, consider joining these lovely group of beans by supporting me on Patreon for perks like early access to vids, my exclusive Discord server, VR chat meetups, and more.